There is a view among a section of people that Modi's re-election would mean a narrow idea of India. So far, the India we know was celebrated in many flavors, but what may receive electoral endorsement is one idea, available in just one flavor, take it or leave it. Is this view misplaced? I think amongst Indian liberals, there is a sense that if Modi comes back as the elected, as the polls suggest that he will, that in a sense, this is going to be um, a, a kind of liberal apocalypse in which some of the trends that you saw in the first term um, of alarm amongst minorities or, or decline of institutions will accelerate very dramatically, that you'll see a scenario similar to Turkey or Russia. I, I don't think that's quite right. I mean, I think you're more likely to see a, a kind of continuation of what we saw in the first Modi term. That doesn't mean this is going to be a, a good outlook for Indian liberals or India's liberal tradition, but it doesn't mean that the collapse uh, of the, the multicultural idea of India that, that you're talking about is going to happen imminently. The other concern, gentlemen, is the, is the mainstreaming of the fringe. Sadanand, in your piece uh, in the Times of India recently, you point out, and I quote, that under Shah and Modi, the party's most glaring error uh, concerned the, the mainstreaming of the proverbial, proverbial fringe. Uh, that was obviously said in the context of Pragya Singh Thakur being given a ticket. Uh, what to your mind would a second innings for Modi mean in this context? Well, you know, that's really my, my biggest concern. It seems that on uh, certain kinds of issues, particularly things that have to do with um, anti-Muslim bigotry, uh, the ruling elite, and by this I mean the Prime Minister and the Party President Amit Shah, uh, they just have no sense of judgment. Uh, they have no breaks. They have no sort of... Uh, no common sense and there doesn't seem to be anybody else either in the party or in government or outside government who can sort of counsel them to take a wiser path. Uh, the most glaring example of this of course was the March 2017 appointment of Yogi Adityanath as Chief Minister of Uttar Pradesh which is India's largest state. Uh, this is a person who had himself set up uh, an anti-Muslim militia. This is a person who is uh, responsible for some blood curdling rap rhetoric um, about Muslims, something he speaks in terms of collective violence, collective retribution and things like that. And so this is sort of someone who was so unsavory and someone regarded as so beyond the pale that he couldn't even be appointed a junior minister and now he's heading India's largest state. Uh, similarly, Pragya Singh Thakur, who is their uh, candidate for the for parliament from Bhopal, and by all accounts looks likely to win, uh, this is a person who is under trial not for any ordinary garden variety sort of charges, but under terrorism charges. This is she's a person who uh, there is credible evidence to suggest was uh, implicated in a bomb blast that killed uh, six Muslims, uh, including a child. So these are extremely unsavory people. If the if the system was functioning properly. And there was some kind of collective wisdom that was operating. Uh, someone would say that, hey, you know, this is really going too far. It's not a good idea. It's destabilizing for India. It's also terrible for India's uh, international image. Uh, you need to rethink this. Unfortunately, the India we're in today, uh, there is nobody out there who can make that point.